Hey everyone, welcome to Lynn and Kathy. We're so glad you're here. Grab a notebook, grab your Bibles and your pens and pencils, and if you have a moment, just sit down wherever you are in the world uh, and take a moment to study the Word of God with us. All of a sudden, things will come to you that you've been pondering and uh, are in a quandary uh, about just because you've read the same verse you've read 500 times one more time. Yes. And it's like the scales of justice, you know. Uh, it's like you just put one more little gravel or weight on that side and all of a sudden it goes bloop over onto the victory side. So we pray that this half hour of your day will be one of those bloop experiences. That's right. Praise the Lord. You know, that reminds me, you talking about the scales. Yeah. You know, in this negative world, there they're weighted down uh -huh. on the negative side and on the defeat side. But the more we s confess the word, the more we speak the scripture, the, the more we ask the Lord for the impossible and declare it done, that weight changes. Just like you said, and we bleep into victory. Can we say it this way? The scales are given to you already preset in that negative mode. Yeah, they so are. So you have to, you have to put positive things down more than taking negative things off. You, you can do that and you must, but in the world, it's sometimes they dump it on quicker than you can take it off. But the way to counteract that, and I say counteract it, is to put the word on the positive side until the weight of the word is greater than the weight of the circumstance. And boop, That's there you right. go into victory, and then you changed what the preset was to the way the Bible says it has to be for you to have victory, and that it can be. That's right, and that reminded me of the testimony of the lady that um, was in the hospital, and she had um, multiple breakout and spots all over her body. She had some disease that now we pretty much have, you know, immunizations for, mm -hmm. so I guess it was smallpox, Lynn. Mm -hmm. It was, mm -hmm. it was smallpox. And they covered her body all over, but she was a strong Christian and she trusted the Lord. And what she do? She began to sing in the hospital. There you go. The Lord told her, praise me that you're healed. Praise me that you're healed. And she began to sing hymns and songs of glory to God. And at first, they, the nurses tried to quiet her down, you know. They do. They said, oh, you're disturbing everybody. But she just kept on singing anyway. You got to have some backbone. You got to have some you do. courage. Well, how, how do you do that? I'll tell you how you do that, ladies and gentlemen. You just, you can look at your body in the mirror. You can look at a symptom and then you just start singing. Oh, the blood of Jesus. Oh, the blood of Jesus. Oh, the blood of Jesus. It washes white as snow. Now that's something you can do. Just start you got to sing it again. Singing before the Lord. Oh, the blood of Jesus. Sing it with me. Oh, the blood of Jesus. Oh, the blood of my Jesus. It washes white as snow. Ooh, I believe somebody was healed while we were doing that. I do too. Amen. You see, listen, let's talk quantum physics for a second. You, you, the spoken word is powerful, but when you add the lubrication of musicality, of musical frequencies to those words, which sometimes have square edges on them and can't really get down really deep, you add the lubricant of, of worship and musical worship, and that 
that word will get down into some deep recesses that it's never gotten able, been able to get in before on its own. But with the music, it was able to do that. And I'm telling you, uh, basically anything that can be spoken can be sung. Now, I don't mean silly things like, pass the pepper, please. You know, I mean, you could, but that'd be silly. But anything that you can say, you can turn into a psalm. What is a psalm? The book of Psalms, there's 150 of them that we have, a few more laying around in some Hebrew Bibles, you know. But a psalm is a song. That is an old English word that means song, but it's not just any song. It's a song of ravings and boastings about our God. And when you put the Word of God to music and begin to just spontaneously praise Him in the midst of the Red Sea coming in on you, in the midst of arrows flying at you, in the midst of the nightmares in the middle of the terror by night, in the midst of people saying flaky things about you, just praise the Lord anyway. In the midst of financial bad reports, physical bad reports, relational bad reports, marriages falling apart, uh, kids acting weird, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You just throw those hands up and open that throat of yours and that voice box and begin to praise God. And praise stills the avenger. That, what does that mean? It shuts the devil's mouth. Yes, it He does. can't stand. I said to the Lord the other day, I said, Lord, what is it the devil hates about praise? He said, well, he hates everything about praise. I said, what's it like to him? And here's what the Lord said to me. <laughs> Put your seatbelt on you. Are you ready? Don't forget this. Praise is like throwing acid in the devil's face. I now love that, it. That will get your attention if you're the devil. <laughs> well, and remember that he is Lucifer. Yep, he was the worship leader. decided in heaven was an ingrate. Mm -hmm. And he decided that it wasn't good enough that the Lord made him exceptionally beautiful mm -hmm. and that he was allowed to lead the worship in heaven. Yep. He wanted to get the praises of God for himself. I'll be like El Elyon, the Most High, in the Hebrew El Elyon. I'll be like the Most High. He wanted to overtake and overthrow, which he's been trying to do ever since he got booted out. And uh, I think Jesus said, I saw Satan fall as lightning. From heaven. From heaven. He it, was. It, you know what? Lightning's fast, isn't booted it? It's out. like a half a second. <laughs> and it's over. And you know what lightning is? Well, it's an electrical discharge of primarily negative uh, electrons and energy from a cloud to cloud or cloud to the earth. Uh, and I would say that when Satan fell as lightning from heaven, it was definitely a negative discharge. They discharge his negative self right out of there. God just, I think the angels may have had something to do with it, but it probably was done by God's mouth. Probably by his voice. By his voice. Uh, that's enough. Be gone to the sludge pot called earth that wasn't created in its beautiful present form at that time. Yeah. And I'm telling you, boy, there's a lot of drama in the Word of God, a lot of stuff your, your, your visualization needs to see and, and think about because God so loved you that he kicked Satan out of heaven. God so loved you that he sent Jesus from heaven to the earth. I mean, it's a personal thing. Everything God does is because of us. Well, that's why he hates praise so much because it reminds him that that didn't work. <laughs> him trying to get praise. He tried to stop praise to God. And yep. so when he hears us all praising God, it reminds him of how stupid he was to be kicked out of heaven and the fate that he has coming in the future. Let me tell you something. A great, great theologian was asked one time at a, uh, a kind of a going away party from a, a, a theological university back in the day. Uh, and this guy was in his 80s and he was retiring. Uh, everybody wanted him to stay, but he wanted to do a few things before he went to be with the Lord in his later life. And uh, they got him up to the uh, microphone and said, Dr. So-and-so, what's the most profound theological thing that you've ever learned 
in your life, in your 70 years of studying scripture and studying spiritual reality and theology. And he thought for a minute and he went to the microphone a little closer and he was, here's what he said. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. Sing it with me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Oh, yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. That's the most profound thing you and I can ever learn. And it is just victory after victory after victory once you know that. Not that there aren't challenges, but victory after victory after victory. Isn't it wonderful? It is, and I didn't finish about the lady. As she sang, like you've been illustrating and demonstrating, the, the mocks, the marks, the pox, the smallpox mm -hmm, mm -hmm. began to disappear from her arms, then her legs, and then there were only a couple left. And she just continued to sing until her body was totally well and whole. Mm. And, you know, our offer today is old hymns. Hymns are trending. Yep. And there are so many hymns on your two CDs that we're offering. But one of the ones, uh, before we let the people know how to get them, one of the ones is Balm in Gilead. Oh, my and, word. And I can just picture her singing that in the hospital that day. Can you sing a little of that for us? Yeah, that's from How Great Thou Art, and then there's Redemption as well, but Balm in Gilead. Oh, it's an old spiritual. It's so beautiful, and it's so simple. Listen to this. Now, Balm, B-A-L-M, means a, a ointment, an ointment or a lotion, a healing salve. So with that in mind, we're talking about Jesus. There is a balm in Gilead to make the wounded whole. There is a balm in Gilead to heal the sin sick soul. If you cannot sing like David, if you cannot preach like Paul, you can tell the world about Jesus who died to save us all. Now's your turn to sing with me. Come on. There is a balm in Gilead to make the wounded whole. There is a balm in Gilead to heal the sin-sick soul. Hallelujah. We'll be right back. Kathy, we have two wonderful CDs that are our love gifts to our partners, and they're How Great Thou Art yes. and Redemption. Talk about How Great Thou Art. How Great Thou Art is with a keyboard and lens vocal, and it has all the favorite hymns of the church. Are there 14 or 15? 15 of them 15 on that one, yes. 15 beautiful hymns. And Redemption is done with a full orchestra, a symphony orchestra, even with Stradivarius violins, wonderful hymns collections that you need in your library. So we're real thrilled for you to have those. The two hymn CDs will be a blessing. 
Enjoy these beautiful symphony classics. Call now at 866-338-5033 or contact us at P.O. Box 308, Heron, Illinois 62948. We've been looking at James, the first chapter, verses 2 through 4. James talking about counting it all joy. And when something tries to steal your faith, just start saying, ha, 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 ha. <laughs> now, we started doing this about many things in our lives. Yes, and we're uh, the better for it, let me tell you. Yes, we are. Woo. You know, we learned this really from Brother Kenneth Hagin. He used to say that he would go back behind Grandma's barn and do a little jig. Do a little dance. To show the <laughs> Lord he was laughing and saying, ha, 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 a little, little jig of joy. And I think of him doing that, Lynn, and I just love Can't it. Can't you just see it? Oh, I can just see, see Kenneth it. Kenneth E. Hagan, <laughs> when he was young, going behind Grandma's barn and doing a little victory dance, you know, just a little shuffle. I'm telling you, sometimes you just got to step out of that zone of comfortable predicti predictability and and, and, and self-focus. Uh, wow. You know, I don't know about you, but I've been so robbed because I've been thinking of myself too much in some areas. And uh, if I would just trust the Lord and quit focusing on my own needs all the time and be, you know, it's a form of cannibalism. Self-focus is a form of cannibalism. Well, what do you mean, Brother Len? That sounds gross. Well, it is. When you feed on self, you get ill. But when you feed on the Word, you get well. And there's just no other way I know how to say it. The Word brings wellness. Feeding off of your own limitations is it, it, toxic. It's not good. It's like a snake eating its own tail. It just destroys itself. So, but when you, when you decentralize self and you go outside of self-referencing, you are going into the area where there are answers other than self. And boy, do we prove on a daily basis that self doesn't have the answers to, to most things. Mm -hmm. So when you go outside of self, you're leaving unanswerable things behind and you're going to the source of life, these divine frequencies, and you're going, okay, I'm going to let pride just take a, uh, take, just chill. Pride goes time out. <laughs> Put your nose in the corner. Get out of here. Now, Lord, I humble myself and I ask, what is it I'm missing? Why am I in this misery? Y you know everything. And you said, ask uh, uh, of me and I will give you wisdom. I'll give you the answers. Uh, trust me. Believe in me, you've said. And so I'm asking you, Lord, what is it you want me to do? And he will tell you and you'll be out of that fix before you know it. That's right. Hallelujah. And when those fixes come, you know, fixes meaning um, situations Dire you, circumstances. you don't want to be <laughs> exactly. in. Uh, this is your answer. Yep. Count it all joy. Ha, ha, uh -huh. ha. This is th what Brother Hagin was going on when he went back these very scriptures and did the jig behind Grandma's barn. Mm -hmm because there were things coming against him and he was not going to give in and let go of his faith. I just say to the devil, you want to make me strong? Persecute me. <laughs> Come on, show me what you got, Dumbo. Persecute me. Make me strong. You persecute me, I will get stronger. I won't go down. I'm getting muscle. I'm going up and I'm going to bust your chops if you persecute me because you're going to make me strong. Thank you. That's the attitude you've got to have. Yeah. And I think that one of the important things to realize with this passage is that this isn't a passage about you being patient. I've heard it preached that way so many times. I hope I never hear it again. Um, this is a passage about laughing in the devil's faith, face, no matter what he mm -hmm. attacks you with, laughing and saying, ha, 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 and letting the force of patience within you pull your faith up and undergird it like the middle of a roller skate. If it was about to break in two, that patience comes under there like a hand when you ha, 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 and keeps that skate together and you can roll right on over those problems. And you, the promise is, if you do that, 
you'll be left mature and complete. Because I looked up those words, Lynn, perfect and entire. Mm -hmm. Nobody's perfect but no. Jesus. Right. So perfect only means complete, mm -hmm. completely equipped through the word with what you need. Yeah, and I was going to say one of the translations says fully equipped. Yes. With everything you need. Yes, that's yeah, right. Love it. And then entire means you've matured. Yes. You've gotten more mature. So you get those blessings on the side, but the real thing is you get what the last two words say, you get what you prayed for. It says you'll be left wanting nothing. You don't have to want it anymore because you have it. Mm, mm, mm. Boy, oh, is I that love good that. news. Well, you know, when we were doing that over some things uh, in our family, I love this to talk about this time because it was so great. We were at the Kenneth Copeland Ministers Conference and oh, the messages were so great. and We were so lifted up and we were so full of joy. And we got in the car with some pastor friends from Canada and we started to another area of Fort Worth for dinner. And then we were coming back for the evening meeting. So we were having the best time. And then our cell phone rang. <laughs> you know, you might want to think before you answer every <laughs> cell call right away. Amen. And it's just an open door. Oh boy, is and it. Into your ear. So we found out that uh, somebody in our family was uh, having some problems and going away that they shouldn't be going. And immediately when we hung up, the Lord quickened us about this passage. He said, you just laugh. So we, we didn't feel like laughing. You don't feel like counting it joy. You don't go by your feelings. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> yeah, but you make yourself ha, ha, ha. Mm -hmm. So we started ha, ha, ha. And all of a sudden, real joy hit us. Mm -hmm. Could barely catch our breath. We were laughing so deeply. We started laughing so hard. Well, the pastors in the back seat had some things they needed a ha ha over too. <laughs> so they joined us. Well, the four of us laughed all the way to the restaurant. We laughed all through the ordering. We could hardly order. We laughed while we ate and we laughed all the way back to the meeting. Yes. And th we never prayed about it. We never prayed about anything. We just laughed at the situation. Mm -hmm. And about a week later, we found out it had all blown over. Everything was fine. Mm -hmm. Without even praying about it, Lynn, just mm -hmm. ha, ha, ha. Amen. So that is what we challenge you to do today with your situation. Whatever it is, the situation that isn't fun, that is troubling you, that is harassing you, that is causing you sleepless nights, just start ha, ha, ha -ing. And do that for a few days and watch what happens. You don't do it by feelings, you do it by faith. That's right. You do it all by faith. That's right. Um, uh, where's our scripture? Romans 14, 17. I love this scripture. Romans 14, 17 says, the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. So if somebody asks the question, well, the depth of the kingdom of God, the great depths and heights. How can you ever define it or <laughs> say what it is? And yet in one scripture, right here. read it again, Lynn. The Lord tells us what the kingdom of God Romans is. Romans 14, 17. For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. Ha, ha, ha. Isn't that the greatest? It's counting it all joy when yeah. it isn't. Yeah. That's how to get real joy on the scene. Yeah. And if you're born again, you're righteous, not by what you've done or haven't done, by, but by Jesus' blood. And it's his desire that you live in peace and you live in joy. And the Holy Ghost is the one that gives it to you if you'll let him, if you'll ha, ha, ha and you can defeat anything in your life, laughing. And then I looked up, Lynn, in Psalm 45, 7, and Hebrews 1, 9. They say the same thing. Mm -hmm. If you hate iniquity, 
and love righteousness, then the Lord anoints you with the oil of gladness. Ooh, that's good. Above thy fellows is the expression that's used. That means you'll have more joy than the people around you. <laughs> I like that. I do too. You'll be a joy magnet. Yeah. And the great thing about that is when you by faith begin to ha 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 and count it all joy, then uh, the real joy hits you. And what does that mean? It's the overwhelming victory about the situation that you had anti-joy about. You had worry, you had fixation of mental activity on the negatives that were going on. And now you've been supernaturally infused with joy and the real joy spreads to other people and it helps them over the hump that they're facing at the moment as well. It gives them strength because the joy of the strength. Lord yes, it does. is our strength. Amen. So if you need strength, start laughing. Amen. I'm telling you, this has just been the fastest half hour on television. We want to thank you for tuning in. And every time you can possibly record this and listen to it again or, or listen live, it's just wonderful. You can also go to tct.tv and get in the archives and look for Lenny and Kathy and shows that you may have missed to continue in a series so the series doesn't have a hole in it for you. Amen. We're so grateful again that you've joined with us as partners here at TCT. You can find out what Kathy and I are doing, our, our itinerary around the world and so forth at LennonKathyMink.com and uh, join us on Facebook, join TCT on Facebook, get active on those media platforms. Don't let them bother you. Use them for the good of the kingdom of God. Amen. Put the gospel all over them. We love you so much. You're never a day without prayer. We're praying for you. We love you. And tune in next time because it's going to be just wonderful. Amen. God is so good. He loves you. He has a plan for your life in Jesus' name.